Hello everybody, this is Nick. Welcome to Art Books on Tape. Today we're going to talk to Paul Stewart about the book, Michael Miller, Photography, West Coast Hip Hop, A History in Pictures. Um, thank you guys for joining us and let's get to it. Welcome to Art Books on Tape. Uh, Today we have my friend Paul. Paul, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, My name is Paul Stewart, and I'm the publisher of Over the Edge Books. And uh, what kind of stuff do you guys make at Over the Edge Books? Uh, We try to get over the edge. Yeah! (laughs) We try to be edgy. Um, My background's in music, particularly urban hip-hop music, so that was kind of a sweet spot for us to start. So we've done... um, the book we're going to talk about today, which is a photography book, which features Tupac and Ice Cube and Snoop and all these people. And we've done a bunch of other books on um, urban culture, hip hop culture. Uh, We did a deal with the estate of Pimp C, the deceased rapper. We have his biography coming out. Uh, A book with Darlene Ortiz, Ice T's first wife, who was really around for kind of like the birth of hip hop and his amazing photographs of like all these tours and, you know, stuff. And so a bunch of really you know, fun stuff we've been working on, cool, edgy stuff. And how did you get involved? I mean, that obviously all those things that were happening at that time was, I mean, history was being made. It's not like everybody knew what was happening. How were you involved in that scene? Well, I um, I was I was lucky to, uh, one of my first jobs was, um, I was, uh, you know, I started off, I was like a DJ and just, you know, interning at record labels. And, um, you know, I started... Uh, did street promotion and stuff. I was really just trying to get my way in, you know, any way I could. And, you know, I was fortunate to um, work for some labels early on that were really successful. And then uh, as a manager, I discovered a bunch of uh, artists from L.A., like um, The Far Side, House of Pain, Warren G., Coolio, um, Montel Jordan. So I I grew, you know, just kind of naturally artists started gravitating to me. They knew me from being out around in the clubs as a DJ or promoter. And then that led to the manager thing. And then I started getting my own labels and I got involved in films and working on film soundtracks and stuff. But now you're doing books. And so what did how? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how, yeah. so what, you know, I mean, obviously you were living it and participating in it at that time. And, but what, at what point did you start saying like, Hey, I need to put this stuff down and printed matter. Um, well, I, I'd done quite a few films as a music supervisor, and I had started to like produce some films, and was just kind of very frustrated with the way that our culture—I say that in a very broad sense—the culture. I mean, like, kind of just a culture that I feel a part of, a uh, urban culture was being represented by Hollywood, and so I, I felt like that we should be able to. I wanted to create an unfiltered place for people to tell their stories, kind of raw uncut stories that maybe Hollywood would, you know, screw up or wouldn't understand or wouldn't, you know, maybe, you know, or, or the mainstream publishers wouldn't appreciate or would you know, and so, um, so, it, you know, that's how it started. And um, it's been growing and all kind of people have been coming to me and going, oh, wow, you know, we love what you're doing and, you know, we want to publish our works through you. And so we, we've published over 30 books and, uh, you know, uh, we see big things on the horizon for us. And what, and what was that first book that you did? The very first book we did was a comic book, uh, and it's called LA 3000, and uh, it's kind of a Mad Max type of thing with real sexy chicks. Awesome. And is that still available? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. awesome. Cool. All right, cool. Well, d- I mean, tell us, this is a pretty amazing looking book. Tell us what you brought today for oh, us man. to talk about. Well, West Coast Hip Hop, A History in Pictures, Michael Miller Photography. Um, This was the first coffee table book that we've done, and, uh, you know, it was manufactured in, you know, a a larger quantity overseas, and, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, Michael Miller was an old friend of mine, and he had, we we knew a lot of the same people, and he he shot a lot of my clients, like Warren G. and Coolio, and a lot of them were in this book, and then he went on to shoot a lot of people like Tupac, and, you know, Snoop and Ice Cube and all these people and so uh, I said Mike you have all these amazing pictures uh, you know after I had started the book company we should do a book and uh, he loved the idea and uh, so you know we um, we set off on the process and uh, you know and so what is this picture on the cover right uh, now? It's, man it's Tupac in the hood <laughs> playing dice you know uh, and against a place where they're selling uh, uh, hubcaps not rims but hubcaps so yeah. 
that's off of like Western and like, you know, by the 110 freeway and, like, you know, pretty so deep south, you know, south central. And, uh, you know, uh, they were having fun just running around that day. And uh, he's with the, the Outlaws. Uh, or, or, or th- that's Rated X. I know that, the guy in the glasses right mm-hmm. there. Yeah. One of his members. So, yeah, you know, Mike picked that picture, and it was just iconic. No one had seen it. Yeah. It was before the book. It was unknown, you know. But he's got, I mean, like, Tupac's got a huge smile on his face. Oh, yeah, and, like, yeah. He's, he's, you know, enjoying himself right yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, it's just such a cool picture. Oh, and there's a guy in the background on the phone with a brick. <laughs> <laughs> he got a big brick phone. That is a brick. It, it, the thing is, this was so real. Was yeah. The thing was, like, they were actually playing. Like, they just sat, sat down there and played, and then Mike just took pictures. And, like, that wasn't their hood. In fact, later they kind of had a little issue. I think some, some Mexicans came to them somewhere else they were shooting and, and took issue with them. But, you know, and, mm-hmm. and this was, Pac was a big deal, but he still, you got to understand, this was before he was, like, household name type of thing or anything. Yeah. So he could kind of run around and be a little bit more, you know, you see the lightness in him. Sure. You know what I mean? So, you know. Yeah, I, you know, so totally. It was, it was, it was you know, we were lucky to get to have known him, and who knew? We just, we didn't know, you know. Yeah. So anyway. And then, know. so what's the format of this book? It's you know, Michael's pictures of your clients, and well, not just my clients by no means. Yeah. No, no, no. We, we we took Michael had this extensive collection of, and these are all pictures that he took uh, for covers, for cover shoots that he was hired to do. And for magazines or for the record labels. Oh, for the record labels. By the record labels, Mike became very hot. Yeah. Uh, you know. Oh, one of the things that that I attribute it to is that you know he shot Cypress Hill's early pictures, and mm-hmm. um, a lot of people like Ice Cube and Easy E uh, saw that style, which was kind of drastically different. It was like this grainy, dark, you know, like thing, and everyone else had been on some like flossy, clean, you know, and sure. and, and Mike was this white guy that liked hip hop, and it just like and sixteen hundred film. <laughs> yeah, and it just he caught on it. I mean, obviously he's super talented. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to take anything from his talent, but yeah. he was definitely at the right place at the right time. You know what I mean? In addition to that, and he had the right attitude, and uh, you know he he capitalized on being a hardworking guy who, who who was ready to go out there and get down. And he got along with the artists because he he was a fan of the music. He loved the music. I mean, a lot of us were friends. Sure. Because, uh, uh, like you were artists, saying, you were out working well, with them. You well, guys were on the same hustle. Well, well some to get of these artists, shows. like Cypress Hill and House of Pain, these were their demo pictures. Like Mike didn't get paid to take those pictures. Sure. Not at first. Like that was because we were all friends. Mm-hmm. You know, this is tight knit circle. So, yeah. Um, do you want me to open it? Or? Yeah, let's open okay, it. Okay, let's cool. talk about it. Because I know we don't have these. too long. So, I'm gonna, yeah. Yeah. No, we're okay. good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Yeah. Open. It. I mean, like, what? You know, we can we can jump to some sections that you like, or you know, just kind of walk us through. You know, pagination of a book is so important, and what in in the pagination were you guys trying to kind of accomplish? Like, well, what are you, you know, I, what is the message that you're trying to push with this book? You know, I I don't want to speak for Mike, and 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 one of the main things with my publishing company is is trying to give artists, you know, full creative control, you know, mm-hmm. until they strangle themselves to do something really <laughs> stupid. But you know, but and then you're per- there to help them. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. But um, but I was super involved in this book. Because, uh, you know, I helped write a lot of the, they all have stories, you know, and, you know, I proofread each one and helped them write and add, you know, change and added some stuff. And and it was very involved in the whole process. But, you know, it might give us freedom. But, you know, this is something that was just very. uh, And so are those stories about those shoots? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And the artist a little bit in general, but mostly all about the shoots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What? Well, love yeah. to hear one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like. Yeah. Uh, well, here, we'll do. I would really, so this first inside thing is just an amazing picture of King T, mm-hmm. and he's got a low rider, and it's like midair. He's hopping it, and then in his front yard, he's got like a truck that's like lowered with like gold Dayton's on it or whatever. And it's yeah. like, and you can see another car. I don't know if that's like a Chevy or a Mustang or whatever, but the house is hood. It looks like it's right next to the freeway. It looks mm-hmm. like, that's that's in South Central. It looks for sure, Compton. I don't know, but um, it's a really cool picture. You know, I think he's got some great pictures with King T, kind of a lesser known but great, big, important LA artist. So, the car. There's our logo over the edge books. <laughs> that makes us happy. Um, well, the first one is Cypress Hill. Yeah. You know. And, uh, you know, it's meaningful. It's very meaningful. Some of these pictures were taken before the group was even completely formed. You know what I mean? They were like cha- other members from the, kind of the crew that were part of, you know, there's a whole kind of a bunch of people hanging out at that time. 
and uh, we were all really close friends, really close. And, uh, you know, Mike took these pictures, and, you know, there, there's this one picture with him, this huge, around all this weed and everything, and uh, this is uh, uh, Brett from 7A3 and Mugs, and, and I guess that's be real. You can't even tell, you know. But, but, you know, but this whole thing of, like, the hooded, the standing around the dark, fire can with sure. the, you know what I mean it was just like I said this is to me what kind of really blew up Mike I think because mm-hmm. nobody was doing some looks like mad mad you know what I mean yeah <laughs> I mean it's just much more raw and there's a lot more emotion in a lot of these images right so you know I think that was a but with also very much of this like documentary street style and, and which is nice I mean it's it's a it's looking at what's going on as opposed to you know so many of his covers I guess at the time were these overproduced things Right, exactly. And, 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 you know, this comes from a creative environment where everybody's hanging out, smoking together, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, you know, going out to clubs, you know. Uh, you know, uh, Muggs was staying at my house for a little while, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, with my roommate, not me really, but, you know. So, sure. I mean, it was a whole, this was just a whole small community, you know. And, uh, you know, so Mike was a part of that, and it was really smart, like, that, you know, he got in there and did that, and, like, these are his friends, you know what I mean? And sure. then look what it turned into, you know what I mean, for him. I mean, he was he was already starting to shoot covers and stuff, but it wasn't, like, he wasn't, like, super big time yet, you know? Yeah. These pictures of WC that come next are crazy. They're taken on Skid Row, actual Skid Row, wow. right here, and you can see, like, wait, wait, here's Coolio looking real dusty. Whoa. He hasn't come out yet, and uh, some of the crew or whatever, so these are real kind of grimy, you know, some L.A. history, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like some real... So then we got N.W.A., man. We got these... This picture of Easy e right here is amazing because, you know, Shepard Fairey did his uh, Shepard Fairey thing of this, yeah. you know? It's kind of a Oh, bum. wow, that is, yeah. We didn't get to capitalize on it in a lot of... Because there, there was there was a lot of business problems with the book we don't need to get into, but... Sure. But, um... But it's... I mean, but that... I mean, these images are so iconic, and that's... I mean... And they are iconic because they are still iconic in the sense that they've held up to the test of time. You know, I'm sure when you took these pictures and everybody was hanging out, it was when like, oh, Mike that's took an, the picture. Yeah, right. like when Mike took these pictures, it was like, oh, that's a great picture. But now looking at them, you're like, wow, that is an amazing picture. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you know, some of, and also some of it's just the rarity, right? Like, so there's sure. these pictures with Easy where he's got the skateboard and uh, he's got a little gun. Little gun. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's, rather be a bit, it's like he didn't know how to skate or whatever, but yeah. he held up the skate. It was Mike's skate, you sure. know. And uh, you know these this this had the internet going crazy. Yeah. We were working on the book. This had people going crazy because this no one had seen that. That was unseen. And sure. That was such a big deal because there was it, honestly you know skating and hip hop wasn't really there wasn't this like emergence of it at that time. No. Like that there was it was so, so it was kind of that was kind of a rare you know interesting. The people, he you know Easy was smart. He he wanted all the white kids to get into this stuff. That's why he was like yeah I'll put this <laughs> on the skateboard. I'm gonna have my gun next yeah, to it. Yeah, just to make sure. That, yeah. Yeah, he was a good dude. You know. Um, but that's what's so great I mean it's like people don't realize yeah I mean I guess people probably do but this you know when you're shooting these covers you're shooting so many things that are never seen you know and you're and you're shooting so many great images that could could be out there and it seems like you know a lot of these are just those great images that he just kept shooting throughout the day that weren't quite record covers you know but they look amazing right no right these are outtakes from the shoot or something right right exactly right right you know well, you know, and th- but they have so much relevance because they're easy in their skateboard. You know, oh, he got a, he, he, right. You know, he got a million yeah. outtakes on some other people. Oh, yeah, who cares? Or whatever. Yeah. Know. But but um, so here's some other pictures of the NWA yeah, members. These cube ones are really cool. Yeah. I think one of my first jobs in the industry, I worked for Ice Cube. Wow. And uh, I did marketing for his company. We were located in South Central Los Angeles. In the rolling 60s, the the rolling road, actually. 60s. So that's how long ago it was. He hadn't well. done Fridays yet or anything like that, the movie. You know, he was already done a bunch of his good albums. Sure. Um, and this, Mike took this down at Street Knowledge. Um, Ice Cube still had a jerry curl in these pictures. Yeah. So uh, Mike said I was there. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't re- You're like, <laughs> I, I'm not, I guess. I, I should have been. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. Egyptian lover. No, oh, sorry. Arabian Prince, very yeah. old artist. Okay, Ice T. These are pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. A live concert, and then him with all his cars, you know. I love these guys, the Booya tribe. Yeah, Not tell, as well tell known. us about them. Oh, man, from Gardena, these Samoan dudes, and they were uh, really soulful. Like, like they had the, like, 
like a Samoan Curtis Mayfield kind of dude, an Whoa. old school dude that sang with them. But yeah, they, you know, they were signed to Island and everything, and they were they were for real, for real though. They were like a lot of these guys came out talking about they were gangsters back then, but mm-hmm. none of the rappers were really gangsters. Like these dudes, these Samoan dudes from Gardena, they were like the Booyah tribe. They were serious like that. And it's funny. I remember they worked security at some of the club. They worked security at this club we did called Water the Bush. And then one night they just they got mad about something. They just didn't show up. <laughs> and they were there. It was like those no, like what? Like no, they're the best dudes. Sweet, nicest guys. You yeah. know what I mean? Like best, best dudes. House of Pain. Wow. Well, in Silver look, Lake. No. Look less. at Danny Boy. It looks like he's like eight. Nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, these they were friends. Everybody was, you know. So this was, you know. Muggs' group. Well, I'm sure you guys, everybody was playing the same venues. You guys were doing the same tours. You were just trying to all do the same thing. It's like, how could you not hang out all the time? It's great. We had a, I had a house on Melrose, and my roommate was a, 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 this big DJ guy named Skate Master Tate. That's kind of old school dude that's well known. And, and, and I did street promotion, so I had records. So people used to come by the DJs, like, and they'd get like Brand Nubian 12 inch or like Cypress Hill 12 inch or whatever. So, mm-hmm. you know, and then and my roommate. He had the uh, the greenery, you know. He used to he had that, so it was like you know. And we were on Melrose, right behind Johnny Rocket, so that was like a hub. Sure, there was a lot of activity there, yeah. you know. Like you know, Mike, the alcoholics, whose pictures I'm looking at right now, they were lived around the corner at one point. You know, it was like Melrose. It was, it was like people were little, hanging out, people were going from here to there. Yeah, it was really cool, little thing. So there was a lot of uh, you know, and then there was only a couple little clubs, you know, sure. that people went to. So it was a really small little scene. Yeah. You know, so everyone, yeah, everyone knew each other. You know, it was tiny. So what else we got? <sighs> Alcoholics under the water. Sure, pre-photo, pounded 40s. No Photoshop, pounded 40s, pretty cool, right? Yeah, and whose idea was that? <laughs> oh, was man, that? Mike's a genius. <laughs> you know, no, this is so cool, like this picture Yeah, right I was going to ask about This that. is a great story, right? Because they were done with the photo shoot, and they go in the liquor store to get some beer, like they really were, and... Mike was like, wait, hold on. And he paid to do at the liquor store a couple of bucks and went into the freezer and took this picture with them staring into the freezer where you can see all the 40s and yeah. just their faces. So it's the point. It's so basically, iconic. this picture is a point of view of a 40, you know, uh, as the alcoholics are opening and reaching in for yeah. you. It's an iconic cover there. Too, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, all the underwater pre Photoshop stuff up to the shot Spice one in Silver Lake, 1990. He liked Silver Lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Oakland, downtown Oakland, 1992. This was a group of mine. The pictures are just so cool. The group didn't blow up, but these are cool. Will I Am as a little in his first group before, before he was the uh, the Black Eyed Peas. There's a lot of history in here, like a Warren G. This was. And these are all early. A lot. I mean, like early 90s. Most of these pictures we're yeah, looking at. Yeah. This, 92, 93. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. This Warren G is famous. This is the album cover from his big sure. triple platinum album, and I was his manager at this time. So this is one of the shoots that he did, you know, for me. It was great, you know. And we're all kind of rising, you know. We sure. always like, man, we got to use Mike. We totally, you know, it was, you know, it was our guy, Funk Dubious. Wow, really cool pictures of them, and that's you know another Cypress Hill, you know, affiliate. So the strip club in in Hollywood or whatever. Uh, these are really cool pictures from the Bay Area. Hieroglyphics, early pictures of uh, you know ninety three two infinity and those guys and everything. So totally. dope black and white. And then there's a picture of Scott Kahn. Yeah. So why 12. don't you why don't you tell why don't you tell us why <laughs> there's a picture of Scott Kahn in your book of early hip hop nineties pictures? <laughs> well, Scott Kahn was in a rap group uh, with uh, Alan, aka the Alchemist, uh, uh, and. Before they were called the hooligans, but actually they were in a group called Lower Level before that. And uh, when I worked for Ice Cube in the era that I was talking about earlier, we tried to sign them mm-hmm. before they signed to Cypress Hill, and they were like kind of like a crisscross type of group. Sure. But yeah, they look tiny here. And so, Mike, you know, was, this was all, you know, Mike and Cypress Hill, man, like, you know, they had been, like I said, we all came up together, so we shot every, you know, their yeah. whole their whole look you know, Mike had a lot to do with their look, and so like you know, he I think you know they felt very, um, and you know, and, and then and then you know, uh, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Estevan Orio, who became really affiliated with them and mm-hmm. all this stuff and shot tons of their stuff, was Mike's assistant at this time. Oh wow! Yeah, interesting. Yeah, good dude, Estevan. Shout out. Yeah. Uh, Blood of Abraham, these guys right here. Yeah. White guys signed to Easy E's label. Yo Yo rolling a blunt. 
Mike didn't want to put this in. He was like, oh, maybe it's going to make Yo-Yo mad. I was like, come on, Mike, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, I had to Oh, wow. This, is, this was my... That's a great Coolio. Yeah, 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 and this was great because Coolio was always Mike. I managed Coolio from like before he came out for like five years. So like we had a long history with Mike taking pictures of Coolio. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he took like all of Coolio's like album covers and everything, you know. So, yeah, we had so many pictures to choose from. Yeah, but I mean, like, these, I mean, it's, I mean, these pictures influenced so much of the scene as well at that time. I mean, this was, this was the imagery people were looking at and associating with this music for a large, for a long period of time of a lot of really amazing influential albums. When we put this book out, people were, a lot of people were like, oh my God, I have that, I had the Tupac picture on my wall. I knew Warren G, they, they, people knew a lot of the pictures, but then there was a lot of pictures they didn't know, which yeah. was cool. And we expo exposed, hopefully, some people to a few, some of the smaller artists that maybe they didn't know, you know. And it's not a complete history. I, I want to do that, like a complete yeah. history of like West Coast hip hop. Because this is just everybody that, Mike shot. He didn't even shoot all my clients. Like he didn't shoot the far side. Yeah. You know, but um But it's amazing in the sense of like it gives it these recorded little pieces of history that then can act as art history for mm. generations on. You know. Right. You know, it's like how could you completely cover all of this? But this is a great first step. You know, this is amazing. Yeah. Well Mike Mike's an amazing photographer and he was he was really, you know, blessed to me in the time. And then, you know, I'm gonna take credit for hopefully hooking him up with a good friend of mine named Fade who worked at Interscope who I believe hired him to do all these Tupac pictures I think that's what Mike told me so mm -hmm. I was involved in a loose way in that anyway too you know and some of these Tupac pictures are some of the most iconic pictures of Tupac yeah. um, and then a bunch of rare ones like you know some of these stuff where they were playing dice and, and in front of the hubcap place and everything and yeah. that no one's ever seen um, so, you know, the Tupac stuff just was huge for the book because, I mean, he has so many fans, uh, you know, like the Elvis thing, you know, so it was like he helped us sell, you know, definitely through, I think a lot of his fans, you know, definitely were like, I mean, who who isn't a fan of his, but I mean, yeah. some, some of his, like, the hard, hardcore fans of his, like, the, mm -hmm. you know, the, like, you know, you know, super hardcore. I think sure, they just like this is their ephemera. You know, helped us, it, it helped us sell a lot of books. He was a great, you know, it was great to uh, be able to kind of lead with, with that stuff of mm -hmm. his. And, and but 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 also have so much to back it up that it's not like we were just like lean. That was only his stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's, there's a, a substantial body of work. You know, we got we fall to MC Hammer next. We're in the Bay Area. I guess Michael Fronte and Spearhead. There's wow. some really cool pictures. You know that are like. King T, he's got the little model lowriders. People love these DJ Quick pictures. The red, you know, is really, you know, Mike loved working with Quick. I, you know, they had, a, they had a great rapport. You know, uh, this is funny. This is the guy from LMFAO when he was a little kid in his first group. Uh, Sir mix -a -Lot, you know. Wow. Yeah. This is an amazing book. Well, I highly, highly recommend everybody get this book. Obviously, we'll have it on a link on the podcast. Um, but yeah so what are, what are what are some of the next projects that you're starting to work on what are you what's coming out next well there was a magazine called Murder Dog that was you know still still in existence but like for many years it was like the premier kind of I don't want to pigeonhole it too much got underground rap or gangster rap kind of a publication it's from the Bay Area and they covered so many artists that just weren't covered by, you know, the bigger rap magazines and stuff that had more, like, smaller niche artists. Some of these artists became huge. Like, I mean, they were the one of the first labels to cover things like Cash Money, so they have, like, pictures and interview with Lil Wayne when he's, like, at, like, 14 with, like, no, almost no tattoos or whatever. It's pretty crazy. So wow. we're re-releasing a bunch of their content um, uh, through books, which we're really excited about. Um, so, so editions of books or...? Well, we, we have one is the best of interviews, volume one. So it's photographs and interviews of, you know, all these artists. And their interviews were so raw, and they didn't edit them at all. They just yeah. verbatim, they put what people said. And it was pretty amazing and eclectic, just diverse group of kind of artists, you know, that, they, that they've that they interviewed and, and gotten different, just different kind of interviews <laughs> from people <laughs> that you can get elsewhere. So, and some really great pictures, like I said, you know, these really rare pictures of a lot of artists when they were younger and stuff. And so there's the interview book and there's one that's just like the covers, volume one. Wow. Yeah, their covers were, you know, um, uh, famous, you know. So uh, we're releasing those and then really excited to release this uh, 
memoirs of uh, Darlene Ortiz, like I mentioned, Ice T's first wife, and uh, just has you know pictures of like Scott LaRock at World on Wheels in L.A. Like pictures of you know Chuck D looking like he's you know fifteen, really young, just like the first yeah. rap tours and stuff. So there's all these amazing photos and and uh, it's a really cool book and you know we. Um, we got tons of cool stuff coming out. So, you know, you can check us out at Over the Edge Books and, and uh, all our social media is up there in the right corner. And, you know, we got a bunch of art books coming out. Uh, this guy, Bino, uh, Brazilian graffiti artist who's traveled all over the world um, and collaborated with different artists. You know, we're, we're working on his book. And, um, you know, just... Uh, I'd probably talk about more, but those yeah. dabs are kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, amazing. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, hopefully you'll come back once you have all those books launched and we can sit and have a conversation about those books as well. Definitely. All right, man. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for having me. All right, bye. Thank you for listening to Art Books on Tape. Brought to you by This Is Not a Pipe. Recorded at Green Street Studios. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Come again soon. Bye.